do you get cheese out of whey after you've already taken out all the cheese? You have this whey and it looks like, like yellowish water. And people say you can just get cheese from it. And I didn't understand that. Like it was just a mystery to me. And then one of my friends showed me how she does it. And I started copying her and I am turning out a large amount of ricotta with each four gallons of whey, generally. It probably depends on the cultures that I use to culture the cheese. It probably depends on the pH of the whey. I have no idea what that is, I'm not testing it. I just know that certain cheeses in my notes yield a really large amount of ricotta. So there you go. This is a four gallon pot of whey left over from making eight gallons of milk into a buterkas. I am making a ricotta cheese out of this, so I am reheating it. Ricotta means recooked in Italian. Right now it's right around 160 degrees or so. You can see a white, a white film on top of it, which is a sign that it's almost a temperature. Look, you can see that it is now a cap of like solids on top. I have not added anything to it. This is just, this is just right around 180 degrees probably. And it's looking fantastic. It's starting to form. So this means it is now ready for me to add distilled white vinegar. And I'm gonna dump in, oh, let's say maybe a quarter cup. Maybe a little bit more than that and get it mixed in and you will start seeing, look at the chunkies that are gonna start coming up. It sounds horrible, chunkies, but that's what it is. As it starts to form, see that? Ooh, and now they're getting bigger and they're getting, it's like a snowball effect. Isn't that amazing? So what I'm gonna do, give another couple of stirs, that's the solids coming up. I'm gonna just stop. And I'm gonna cut the heat and let it sit here for, oh, 20 minutes maybe? And it'll turn into a nice firm cheese and then we'll come cut it. This is 20 minutes after it's been sitting. You can see, woohoo. <laughs> so, can you hold this for me, hun? As the curds sit in the molds, they will settle. So fill them all the way up to the brim and then give them a couple minutes to kind of go back down and then come back around a second time and fill them the whole way up to the top and above the top. I bought my molds from New England Cheese Making Supply Company, but you can make your own by just punching holes in like cottage cheese containers or any good plastic food storage container that you have how white it is and there's still some solids in there but you can't pick them up and if I stir it up you will see more that are down below see all that comes up but it can't really filter that out. if I put it through a pack uh, I mean a strainer like a cloth it might work there I got a little bit more but mostly you see it but it doesn't it's not really usable and then this is what I got that one that one that one so I got those four containers of ricotta, plus I made buterkas, which was probably about a five pound cheese in the press. That's a lot from eight gallons of milk. Here it is a half hour later. You can see how much it sunk down. Exactly one pound from the big one, and nine ounces from that, 8.4 from that, 12 from that. That's almost three stinking pounds of ricotta. that is how you make delectable, incredible, fantastic ricotta. So freaking yummy. I always thought if you're gonna do ricotta, 
from the whey. All that milk has been sitting in there. It's kind of like it coagulated in there. It turned into the curds and then you cook the curds and it's just like, really? Is that going to be good? That's all that milk sitting out at like 90, 100 degrees for hours. And then I'm going to like bring it to a boil and get more cheese that's going to taste any good. Isn't it going to taste rotten or sour or funky or weird? It doesn't. It's sweet and cheesy. It's really good. And there goes my timer for to see if this cheese is set up. I'm making a dill Havarti today. 